while they're doing that, I thought um, that uh, I would give you a little bit of background about me. Um, it's the final one. Great. I'm Deborah McCutcheon, and I am a full-time volunteer with Citizens or Canadians for Safe Technology. My background is a Bachelor of Science with Honours in Chemistry and Computer Science and an MBA. I worked for 20 years in the telecom industry, and I worked both programming telecom switches, and also I worked uh, in the UK in global strategy for one of the most global telecoms companies, Stephanie. Um, my presentation is looking at fertility, children, learning disabilities, and the process failure. It is my view that the process is failing the most vulnerable members of our society. And one thing I learned in working in global strategy is you need to monitor the environment and companies that do not adapt to the environment will go bankrupt. It is also my view that governments that do not adapt to the environment will go bankrupt also. And it's easy to be out of date. What are the, fa sorry. What are the failures of the current Safety Code 6 process? A dogged adherence to an out of date process a refusal to accept public input, a process that is not world-class, and a government department that hides behind their process rather than protecting the public, a culture of standing still. This is not, it, Safety Code 6 was never designed appropriately for public policy. It was designed federal and military buildings. And maybe for that kind of use, a backroom ad hoc process with no public input and no proper methodology might work. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a federal employee in that case, but it might work. It does not work for public policy across Canada. There's also a mismatching of the environment in Canada. Um, the provincial government has to pay the costs of misregulation, while the federal government gets the fees from all the cell towers, as well as from licensing new spectrum, billions of dollars. And Health Canada has no financial visibility or responsibility for illness or harm. They have no environmental factors that are causing them to change, causing them to update. And I believe that's why they are in a state of stasis. The wrong people are are regulating or reviewing the safety codes for this toxin. Safety code six also has a 50 times safety margin. Other toxins have a 10,000 times uh, safety margin. And we're emitting low dose testing, which is one of the main testing criteria for a lot of the chemicals in the marketplace. This is a specific look at the foundational concepts of Safety Code 6. And we see that short-term exposure is no longer relevant. Most people, including fetuses and children, are 64-7. It's also irrelevant to look at single devices. There is simultaneous exposure to a multitude of devices, and everyone is experiencing that. And the SAR level, head, neck, and trunk of an adult man is extremely irrelevant. We are now dealing with devices that have four, five antennas where people and babies are carrying them in places that are not their neck, trunk, or head. Um, I saw recently an, an iPhone application that was a baby rattle, and the baby was chewing exactly the antennas were. It, the idea that um, that is the appropriate specific absorption rate is appropriate is out of date. Um, the SAM head side is not relevant for women or children, and we know that children absorb far more radiation deeper into their brain. Also, gross, gross tissue heating, you've heard a lot about that today, is completely irrelevant. And time averaging 
is irrelevant. And you'll see my points there. Um, you will be getting uh, copies of all this. Okay, great. Um, being an equity analyst, I am very comfortable with numbers and spreadsheets. And I thought I would only look at one area. So um, I looked at ADD and ADHD and autism. These numbers are well available in the US. And I took uh, appropriate numbers, uh, equivalent Canadian uh, revenue or costs and, um, and cases. So what you can see is, an, is that uh, we're getting uh, a very substantial increase in the rate of ADD and ADHD. This is happening worldwide. Most interestingly, it's happening in those areas of the world with the highest um, electronics density, the highest microwave density. So we see Silicon Valley and other areas where um, ADD, ADHD, and autism are leading in terms of statistics, uh, in terms of growth. And you can see that my estimates are that in just from autism and ADD, ADHD, that Canada, this is costing about $9 billion. And I think my numbers are incredibly conservative. So, you know, the, we a bit later, and I've actually done a literature review, which I will make sure you get a copy of science that provides a link between the growth in cumulative microwave exposure and the potential uh, and the cause of ADD and ADHD and autism. And uh, I hope you'll look at it seriously because this is a major issue. I'm looking at it on a broader Canadian term. Autism and ADD, ADHD is a cost that occurs at a provincial level. And the, pr the provinces have no, they simply follow safety code six. So there, the federal government is getting the revenue benefit, the provinces are becoming bankrupt and paying for the, um, the costs of these illnesses or learning disabilities. In my view, it's impossible to have confidence in the outcome of the safety code six review when the process is corrupted by stasis and irrelevance. And Safety Code 6's failure is putting most vulnerable Canadians at risk. So I'm not going to go through all of these. I will send them to you. Would you prefer copy the actual studies, or would you prefer just links, web links, to all of these studies? Web links are fine, actually. Okay. That would be uh, just fine. There's such a volume of literature that that's we're transmitting everything electronically anyway. So Excellent. So um, studies showing children are more vulnerable. Prenatal exposure. This is a very important issue. Um, behavior and attention. And this is not the prenatal. This is postnatal. And we see those linkages with issues of uh, blood lead levels and attention deficit, which also brings us to the issue of compound toxicity. Uh, it is very likely that people with higher levels of metals in their system will be more affected by microwave radiation. Key studies on autism. Um, I believe you have a submission from Martha Herbert of uh, uh, Harvard, I believe. And I think uh, I will ask you to read that very carefully. And of course, fertility, there's just been a huge review by the BC, BC Center for Disease Control, um, which uh, I will send you that link, because that's also very important. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'd like to see what you have to fill out. I'd love to send that. I, we had no idea, because of all the redacted documents and refusal to answer any of our questions about this process that you had no literature. Um, it's amazing to me that uh, because Health Canada completed their own internal review. So we, we assumed that that had been forwarded to you. Uh, and, and it's we're certainly an open slate for what we can consider. Yeah. And we're we're focusing a lot on the most recent literature because there's been a lot of comprehensive reviews in the last few years. So I noticed that many of your your articles are in uh, 2010 to 2013, which is, is useful for us. So you're not looking at 
did anything before 2010 to 2014? No, I'm just saying that there are a lot of comprehensive reviews that are out there that have covered literature in the past. So we're focusing at least on making sure that we're adding the most recent thing. It's not that we're not looking at the older literature. It's just that uh, there is new literature coming out. We want to make sure that that's covered. One of the things, a slide that um, actually wasn't in, didn't come up, but uh, was in my pack, and you will see it, is um, talks about industry manipulation. I worked in the industry, so I'm, I think, qualified to talk about industry manip manipulation. And a very clear case of this, we are the only country that is the, the Canadian Wireless Association is providing half of the funding, or they're one of the main two funders. And the actual terms of reference make it clear to me that the telecom industry will be up to their elbows in this study. The main Canadian scientist involved in this review is Daniel Kruski. I know that most of the panel members know him. And he has been, um, he had recommended benign neglect towards the science to help Canada in order to, as a way of dealing with a concerned public. He is not the type of person that should be re the main reviewer for Canada on a study. And certainly um, his industry links and um, the fact that the study is being paid for by the industry does not give me a lot of confidence in the results, the Canadian results. Interphone, Canada, Canadians' Interphone um, study had the same issues. So, um, you know, it, it, it is an issue. We allow industry to rule our primary research, which is happening in this case. And um, I, you know, I ask that uh, Perhaps as part of your Safety Code 6 review is not only a comment on the process that is so outdated, but also a comment on the future funding of scientific research in Canada not to be funded by industry. I think that's We have access to the entire world's literature. I can go to my office at the university and get anything that's published. So the problem is not lack of literature, the problem is trying to focus on what the public views as important. So I think it would be most helpful to me to have identified the duties that in your view require a, a change in the safety code six um, limits. Because we don't possibly have the time to go through several thousand papers to repeat. I, I understand that. Process. We I've had quite a lot of dialogue, as you can imagine, with Health Canada on this issue. And my experience is, is when I talked about the irrelevance, the four main irrelevance, irrelevances of Safety Code 6, the one device, the, um, the SAR, the SAR, the ozone thermal, et cetera, every time we speak to Health Canada, they dismiss the studies on the basis of one of those four points. So I think one of the issues is that perhaps the review criteria, we don't know because we haven't seen it, may not be appropriate because the current uh, safety code is not appropriate and to go back to those criteria is not appropriate looking forward. I think from my point of view as a scientist, the important thing is, is, is there a hazard that has not been adequately addressed by safety code six? And if we receive papers that suggest immediate hazard, then we can look at related papers, try to put these in, in a broader context and see if there really is what reason to recommend a major change in safety code, um, as opposed to trying to review 2,000 papers that may be put in the literature over the past five years. It, it comes back to Mark Friesen's point, which is the whole calculation of hazard and using weight of evidence. Um, you know, what confidence can we have when we don't see any of the actual analysis? Um, and we know that within the World Health Organization, their categorization of 2B, which there is an argument, a strong argument now in published literature for 2A, is based on strength of evidence. And as a Canadian, that I prefer. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.